Blue-eyed humans have a single common ancestor. This is a finding by University of Copenhagen on Science Daily. New research shows that people with blue eyes have a single common ancestor. Now we know that it's written in the Old Testament, the um, story of Noah. Noah was, uh, it was shocking that his father found that he had blue eyes, the, the color of the sky, and he thought that that was very unusual. Now, new research shows that people with blue eyes have a single common ancestor. A team at the University of Copenhagen tracked down a genetic mutation that took place from 6,000 to 10,000 years ago and is the cause of the eye color of all blue-eyed humans alive on the planet today. What is a genetic mutation? Originally, we all had brown eyes, said Professor Hans Eiberg, from the Department of Cellular and Molecular Medicine. He said, but a genetic mutation affecting the OCA2 gene in our chromosomes resulted in the creation of a switch, which literally turned off the ability to produce brown eyes. The OCA2 gene color uh, uh, gene codes for the so-called P protein, which is involved in the production of melanin, the pigment that gives color to our hair, eyes, and skin, the switch, which is located in the gene adjacent to OC2, OCA2, does not, however, turn off the gene entirely, but rather limits its action to reducing the production of melanin in the iris, effectively diluting brown eyes to blue. The switch's effect on OCA2 is very specific, however. If the OCA2 gene had been completely destroyed or turned off, Human beings would be without melanin in their hair, eyes, or skin color. That's a condition known as albinism. Limited genetic variation. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And here we have an example of statues found in Egypt with blue eyes, Sumer with blue eyes, Peru even, Latin America with blue eyes, and India with blue eyes. Now, limited genetic variation. Variation in the color of the eyes from brown to green can all be explained by the amount of melanin in the iris, but blue-eyed individuals only have a small degree of variation in the amount of melanin in their eyes. From this, we can conclude that all blue-eyed individuals are linked to the same ancestor, says Professor Eberg. He says they have all inherited the same switch that exactly the same spot in their DNA. Brown-eyed individuals, by contrast, have considerable individual variation in the area of their DNA that controls melanin production. Professor Eberg and his team examined mitochondrial DNA and compared the eye color of blue-eyed individuals in countries as diverse as Jordan, Denmark, and Turkey. His findings are the latest in a decade of genetic research, which began in 1996 when Professor Eiberg first implicated the OCA2 gene as being responsible for the eye color. Nature shuffles our genes. The mutation of brown eyes to blue represents neither a positive nor a negative mutation. It's one of several mutations such as hair color, baldness, freckles, and beauty spots, which neither increases nor reduces a human's chance of survival. As Professor Aberg says, it simply shows that nature is constantly shuffling the human genome, creating a genetic cocktail of human chromosomes and trying out different changes as it does so. Now, DNA analysis of the 6,500-year-old human remains with blue eye mutation American Friends of Tel Aviv University on Science Daily. An international team of researchers from Tel Aviv, University Israel Antiquities Authority, and Harvard University discovered that waves of migration from Anatolia, that's Turkey, Western Turkey, and the Zagros Mountains, today's Turkey and Iran, to the Levant, helped, P, uh, helped develop the Chalcolithic culture that existed in Israel's Upper Galilee region some 6,500 years ago. The study is one of the largest ancient DNA studies ever conducted in Israel, 
and for the first time sheds light on the origins of Chalcolithic culture in the Levant about six to 7,000 years ago. Researchers for the study, led by Dr. Hila May and Professor Israel Hershkovitz, uh, Department of Anatomy and Anthropology, Dan David Center for Human Evolution and Biohistory Research at TAU's Sackler Facility of Medicine, Dr. Dina Shalem of the Institute for Galilean uh, Archaeology at Kenaret College and Israel Antiquities Authority, and Aidan Harney, Professor David Rake of Harvard University, published in Nature Communications. In 1995, Zvi Gal, Dina Shalem, Howard Smithline of the Israel Antiquities Authority began excavating the Pekiin Cave in northern Israel, which dates to the Chalcolithic period of the Levant. The team unearthed dozens of burials in the natural stalactite cave that is 17 meters long, 5 to 8 meters wide, the large number of unique ceramic ossuaries, and the variety of burial offerings discovered in the cave suggests it was once used as a mortuary center by the local Chalcolithic people at that time. The uniqueness of the cave is evident in the number of people buried in it, more than 600 people, and the variety of ossuaries and jars and the outstanding motifs on them, including geometric and anthropologic, anthropomorphic designs, as Dr. Shalom said. Some of the findings in the cave are typical of the region, but others suggest cultural exchange with remote regions. The study resolves a long debate about the origins of the unique culture of the Chalcolithic people. Did the culture change in the region following waves of migration, the infiltration of ideas due to trade relations and or cultural exchange or local invention? We now know that the answer is migration. The researchers subjected 22 of the skeletons excavated at Pekin, dating to the Chalcolithic period, to a whole genome analysis. Dr. May said, this study of 22 individuals is one of the largest ancient DNA studies carried out from a single archaeological site and by far the largest ever reported in the Near East. The genetic analysis provided an answer to the central question we set out to address, Professor Reich said. It showed that the Pekin people had substantial ancestry from northerners similar to those living in Iran and Turkey that was not present in earlier Levantine farmers. Certain characteristics, such as genetic mutations, contributed to blue eye color were not seen in the DNA test results of earlier Levantine human remains, Dr. May said. The chances for the success of such a study remain slim since most of the ancient DNA studies carried out in Israel have failed due to difficult climatic conditions in the region that destroy DNA. Professor Herchkovich said, fortunately, however, human DNA was preserved in the bones of the buried people in the Pekin cave, likely due to the cool conditions within the cave and the limestone crust that covered the bones and preserved the DNA. He said, we also find that the Pekin population experienced abrupt demographic change 6,000 years ago. Indeed, these findings suggest that the rise and falls of the Chalcolithic culture are probably due to the demographic changes in the region, Dr. May said. Now, why did the ancient Sumerians have blue eyes? Century ago, archaeologists found puzzling Sumerian statues with blue eyes, deep blue eyes that still remain unexplained to this day. The ancient Mesopotamian civilization of Sumer, located in the fertile crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates River from 4,500 BC that's over six and a half thousand years ago to four thousand years ago. The Sumerians were known for their innovations in language, governance, architecture, but much of their culture remains shrouded in mystery with few written records from the civilization besides what little we know from cuneiform tablets. But we do know that the Sumerians had a very complex pantheon of gods and evidence of their worship can be found in ancient temples such as the Temple of Ishtar in the ancient city-state of Mari, located in modern-day Syria. The temples of Ishtar, Ishtarat, and Nini Zaza were discovered in 1933 by André Parot, and the discovery led to even more questions about these ancient Sumerians. The most interesting find in Parot's excavation was found in the temple of Ishtar. Ishtar was an ancient Mesopotamian goddess 
associated with sex, war, justice, political power. And inside the temple was a statue of Ibih Il showing his devotion to the goddess. Ibid Il was superintendent of Mari, but the ancient Sumerian statue depicted Ibid Il with blue eyes, which seems to contradict the conventional understanding of ancient Sumerian people. Sumerians are rarely described with blue eyes, and they are the most commonly described as North African or Semitic, in other words, with dark eyes. The blue-eyed Sumerian statue is currently preserved in the Louvre Museum in France, in Paris, and the museum described the eyes as including an inlay of shell and lapis lazuli set in shale. Lapis lazuli was a valuable resource that was typically traded from Afghanistan, and the existence of lapis lazuli in Mari in, in Syria is evidence of a long-distance relationship between countries in the Middle East as early as the 13th millennium BC, that's 5,000 years ago. Other statues from ancient civilizations have also been discovered with deep blue eyes, made from the lapis lazuli. For example, the ancient Wari mummy, known as the Lady of Mask, was discovered in Peru with piercing blue eyes. And some theories suggest that ancient statues were made with blue eyes as a way to symbol symbolically show divinity, but there's no concrete evidence for that theory. Currently, there's no way to definitely know if ancient Sumerians had blue eyes, but the statue might be evidence that at least some Sumerians had blue eyes or contact with people who did have blue eyes. This is according to Wackoid, and um, I'll leave links below for you for this. So it seems to be, uh, from what the uh, scientists have found, one common blue-eyed ancestor. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.